Welcome to today's show. I am very excited to introduce my friend, Lynnette Mason. And if you haven't listened to previous episodes yet, please dive into our first couple where we discuss not only DEI, but the great resignation. And so I love having Lynette on here because we work together in the insurance industry and she is the VP of Service and Individual Operations over at Emeritus. And so I welcome you back, Lynette, and I'm so excited to have you on our show to really talk about ways to implement diversion, equality, and inclusion in the workplace. So before we kick it off, I'd love to have you share with the audience, if they don't know you yet, a little bit more about what you do every day over at your organization. Thank you, Amber. Appreciate being here with you again. So Mm -hmm. what I do in the organization that I've been in for 30 years is um, I am... While my title is VP of service, I'm a problem solver, right? So um, (laughs) my team processes, you know, anything from life, DI, annuity, new business, new applications coming in. I also have the contact center. So they're answering calls from our field partners, our clients. And then we have our back office um, policy service team that Mm -hmm. handles all the changes that happen after the case is put in force. So a lot of um, client facing, a lot of agent facing, um, and really a hardworking, great, dedicated team. Absolutely love what I do. We're in the midst of right now, um, just trying to build more technology and just make our processes more efficient to, you know, to help with all this business coming in and making the experience good for our clients. Yeah, I think that you guys, that's another, I forgot about the the tech, the tech task force and some of the innovation that you guys have had in the insurance industry as far as some of the technology that is being rolled out. I feel like you guys are usually first to the forefront, if you can be, to add things that would make not only the team, the, the people in the field, their life easier, but for the clients too. So it's always fun to hang out with you guys and talk about what you're doing. Um, when we talked initially in the podcast, we, we were discussing what is DEI and diversity, equality, and inclusion. And so we gave some takeaways, but I would love to talk about ways that you're implementing different steps within your organization, because I think sometimes people might feel like it might be too difficult to rule out some, some of these steps. And so if the audience hasn't listened to our original episodes yet, uh, let's just kind of give them a high level of what we've talked about. So you were touching on inclusion quite a bit. When it comes to what is DEI, let's just answer that question again here today and then talk about ways that you guys are plugging in some resource groups within the organization. We could probably start there and then we'll give the audience some tips once we're done with that. Sounds good. So, um, you know, going back to the definition, right? So I I always like to start with inclusion first because I think it's the foundation, right? It's just making people feel welcome, including them, listening to them, um, you know, just being there in the front, um, you know, making sure that they're paid attention to and listened to, right? That is key. You have to listen to, to people, really understand what's happening with them. And then, of course, you know, it's treating people um, equally, and then diversity, meaning, um, you know, anything from a human standpoint that makes us all a little bit different, right? It could be the color of your hair, your color of your eyes, my accent. It could be, um, you know, your skill set. You know, it could be so many things, right? It's just really taking the time to understand what those differences are and just incorporating it in our, our day-to-day lives because we're going to learn a lot from each other. Yeah, I mean, I think about when we look at Uh, focusing on talents. You don't want everyone to be the same. You wouldn't get anything done. We want to really bring in different talents to have those different skill sets and different thoughts coming from different cultures and experiences. So really mixing it up is, I think, really great for for everybody um, to really make a difference. Um, But let's talk about some of these groups. I know that you've told me, I've I've heard it it, it through the pipeline, just, you know, from conversations through either conferences or conversations we've had, but what are some of the groups that you're affiliated with now? Because this could give other organizations ideas of what to put out there themselves. So I'll let you talk about that a little bit. Yeah, so I, I think I'm going to start too with 
like how our journey even started to get to that mm-hmm. point of where we created this these resource groups. Um, Cause I think we have a, um, a good story to tell because I'm just going to touch on what you said early on in this podcast was it's um, it's a big initiative, right? It's really big and it can be really overwhelming. So you have to take it yeah. in chunks in order to be successful instead of trying to just get everything done out of the gate. And so the approach we took was, you know, number one, there has to be a commitment, right? And it has to come from senior leadership, right? So that was our CEO. He, he said, we need to make this part of our culture and we need to take the steps to get there, right? So that, that was number one. And once that came into play, um, then we also created a um, diversity inclusion council, that is okay. made up of senior leadership within the organization. So I am part of that council as well. And it is a commitment, right? Because we have a full-time job, but we all raised our hands. It was voluntary. We raised our hands and we said that this initiative is so important. We do want to be part of it. And so what we basically do is we um, work with other partners like marketing, human resource, Um, our CEO, uh, you know, just to figure out, okay, what are the things we need to work on? Do we need more HR, um, you know, education pieces? Okay, let's put that out there. Do we need to market things a little bit different? Let's put that out there. You know, how do we recruit people in diverse markets, right? Those are the kinds of things that we're involved in, Um, you know, and, and then we also took some other steps, like looking at our board members, right? Like, how do we make our board more, um, diverse as well? So we worked on that, we created a couple of surveys um, that go out a couple of times a year just to kind of gauge where we are. And then we're also using that as measurements of, you know, what are the things we need to work on and what are the things we're really doing good at? Um, and then we also created, to your point, these resource groups. And um, again, you know, we put it out on internet. We said, I, you know, we're understanding that people want to create resource groups we don't want to get too crazy and create a hundred of these, right? Because this is new mm-hmm. to us. So we wanted right. to make sure let's pick four where we think um, it's going to have a, a, an impact, where we're getting the most votes to have um, as resource groups. And let's measure how this happens and how it goes along for the next year. And then we'll add on to that. But, you know, we had a couple of associates within the company that raised their hands and they said, not only do I want to be part of these resource groups, but I want to lead these resource groups. And sure. so we have four right now. We have our um, our young bison, which is new associates coming into the insurance industry. Um, we have um, Babs, which is a um, black Americans resource group. We have associates with disability, and then we have the LGTBQ plus resource mm-hmm. group. And it's not only just them working together, um, you know, just to, you know, kind of bounce ideas off each other and education and all that stuff, but they're also working with the community um, right. as well. And um, it's it's been working out really great. I'm so impressed by these um, individuals that have taken this on. And then we also have senior leadership that is linked to each one of these resource group um, okay. to help them, right? Guide them. And also if they run into any roadblocks, senior leadership is going to try to help them, you know, okay. with this. So leadership says, yes, we need to do this. Okay. So that's a step. Then I think you guys had this rolled out almost within 12 months of the yes. I mean, is that, it sounds like it's doable. I mean, yes. this would be something that you could implement even faster if your organization's smaller, but it sounds like we got the yes from the, 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 the leadership and then there's a person that's raising their hand. So we assign a point person that can work directly with the leadership and then it can be rolled out. So, I mean, am I about right on the time frame? Because I think I remember seeing different logos and things within a short window of time. So it's, and you guys created four. What if there's just one? You, it's doable, I guess, is my point. Yes, absolutely. So we started with asking for um, ideas for resource groups around um, October of last year. Yeah. And then, you know, they had to come up with their plan, um, you know, by the fourth quarter of last year. And in January, they just, went, they, are up and running, which uh, we've gotten a lot of really, really great feedback. 
They've had some great speakers um, as well. It's just been really well received. The young bison. I don't know that everyone in the audience would know what, what bison stands for. Do you want to share about that a little bit? What the bison is for? Oh, yes. Yeah. Well, so the bison is um, not, please let's not confuse it with a buffalo, right? It's a, it's a, um, it's, <laughs> it's a, this strong animal, right? And it's, um, <laughs> it is our logo. And yeah. Um, so, yeah, so that's where that, that came from. Yeah, so I like that. We've, you and I, we, we're about advocating for uh, the industry and financial services, but then also really trying to get more of the younger generation interested. Uh, we talk about it a lot where with my daughter, who's almost four, you know, these, what do you want to be when you grow up? And they don't say, I want to <laughs> do financial planning. I want to be a planner. I want to be an insurance <laughs> planner. That doesn't happen. No. So we have to try to incorporate, uh, you know, that's part of my mission is part of my mission statement is to really help the younger people. But I like that you guys have a way to tap into the younger generation to really get them interested and find a place in the financial services. So we've talked about the resource groups now, but that doesn't stop there. You also have leadership groups yeah. too. Yeah. Okay. So, but one has been around for a quite a bit of time, the AGL. And then AWE is something that we just were able to participate in for the first time at a kickoff. So let's talk about these two or, um, groups because this is something people could incorporate within their own organizations as well. Yeah, so um, the Emeritus Growth Leaders and our four advisors. And this is kind of the same thing as our Young Bison which is our internal resource group, where we are taking these young advisors, like new in the business, um, mm -hmm. that want to get into financial planning, but really need a little bit of, of help along the way, right? So um, we help them by connecting them, you know, with other people that fall in, in the same lines as they do. Um, we have a couple of meetings set up throughout the year. Um, some in person that we finance where they get to network and brainstorm. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, to, you know, to the point of, of mentoring that was made earlier, there is um, a more seasoned um, advisor that gets linked up with these individuals to help as a mentor, right? I think I've seen um, um, some data that says that new advisors, young advisors coming into the business if they don't have that hand holding and that mentoring within three years, they just move on to something else, right? So with okay. our, you know, with our field, I mean, they're they're getting older, right? They're aging, so we got to make sure that we get these young people engaged because this whole part of financial planning is is important, like now more than ever. That's interesting that you say that because I know the American College has a whole set of statistics that talks about mentorship. And if you are participating, whether you're receiving mentorship or giving, it usually starts this relationship that's ongoing because once you serve, then you might need to receive and it, it keeps going on. But there's more positive um, I don't want to say like mental health, but there are more positive experiences statistically when people are involved in mentorship. And even if they are giving it, giving it away, that servitude is definitely something that's good for the soul and then it's good to serve. So I like how AGL does bring the, the OGs kind of back around to help as people move up into that, the, the leadership group. So that's a co-ed group and that's on a national basis. And then there, there was a most the most recent one, the women's empowerment. So am I saying that right? Yes. Let's have you talk about that because I might have just said the acronym wrong. <laughs> it's the um, Emeritus Women Elevated. 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 <laughs> <Yes>. On the spot. <laughs> like empowerment. It is empowering. Yes, it <laughs> is, right? You're, you're, you're elevating each other. You're empowering, right. empowering each other. It goes hand yes. in hand. For sure. And we have about 40 members right now, um, which is great because I, get, I have to tell you, when I started in this industry 33 years ago, 40 mm -hmm. women advisors yeah. was unheard of. Right. So right. that is such a big milestone. We should be very proud of it, but we need to keep growing. Right. But um, yes, yeah, so we just had our, our kickoff. Our, our mm -hmm. first in-person meeting, which was great. Um, I was part of that. 
And just being able to sit in and listening to all the idea sharing and, you know, phone numbers being exchanged, yeah. and just like it, it, like a true partnership to support each other was um, empowering. And I felt energized, right? I'm not even an yeah. advisor and I totally felt energized about it. Um, so, so yes. And then we'll also do the same thing. Like we will have meetings, in-person meetings, virtual meetings, right. you know, we will help, you know, support, um, you know, financially for, for these meetings. So, um, yeah, I'm expecting a lot of great things from, um, ah, uh, emeritus women elevated as well. Elevated. <laughs> Okay, so for the audience, there's a number of resource groups that you can tap into, create, start with maybe one, because that's kind of, that's what you guys did. I think initially it was the AGL, and then other things happened after the fact. So um, as you've been speaking about this, you've done a lot of advocacy over the last, um, I want to say, I keep saying 12 months because I just feel like the last year probably because conferences were starting to happen again and it wasn't just webinars. Um, as you go and you speak about this, you're being asked to speak between NAFA and some of these other organizations out there. Um, coming from Emeritus, you partner and sponsor. You guys are also uh, a partner to Women in Insurance and Financial Services. So as you go through and you speak about this, we've talked about a number of things in our previous episodes. To wrap up today, outside of the what we've we've identified is the leadership really needs to be a part of it. Then we need somebody that can lead the the group. Um, it doesn't have to be perfectly just like that. But is there anything else that, that from commentary feedback that you you've been a part of, and even just the brainstorming sessions? What else can people do to really put this into motion? Yeah. So um, I would say a couple of things. Um, I. Definitely say the commitment, right? You can't do this alone. It's it's too big. And while you want the commitment from an organizational standpoint, um, you need to take some initiative on your own, right? You, you have to educate yourself. You have to believe in this in order to be successful. So don't depend 100% on the organization. You have to take the steps. And then what I would say too, you know, there's a lot of discussion that comes up in regards to, um, you know, I want to hire more diverse people, but I want to make sure I'm hiring the right person. And what I would say mm -hmm. is absolutely 100%. At the end of the day, you have to hire the right person with the right skill set. It, it doesn't matter what they look like, right? However, yep. however, you could yes. be working with HR or, or um, someone, a recruiter, to help you tap into those diverse markets to even recruit from, to make them part of your pool of candidates, right? I think that's that's the link that I think sometimes we we forget about. Um, and I- But teamwork again. Yes, absolutely, teamwork, right? You know, my, my people here, they're like, um, you know, they make fun of me because I'm always saying it takes a village. It absolutely takes a village. Right? Mm -hmm. This is not a task that can be done on your own. Well, the part of the reason I created the Pathways of Peak Performance podcast is to to really, it was, I always say it's like the collection of the greatest hits up through COVID. I wanted to put together a system that helps people have more resilience. And so if people are teasing you about it takes a village, it takes, you got to focus on building your community because things are going to happen. You might have to reschedule something, but if you have a great team, you can then have someone fill the spot or, or cross cross train or whatever the case is, but implementing some of these, these, um, teams that are important because as you and I've previously discussed in a different episode about the great resignation, this could be an easy, not easy because it takes some time and sweat equity, but an easy solution that takes a few volunteers to then say, we can participate in, more of that diverse, that understanding, getting people involved, being inclu inclusive, that could be a little solution to that great resignation, some of the problems we were seeing. How do we then build better, better companies, better organizations? What if it starts with some of these resource groups, getting people to have some ownership in that business by having their, their different groups or um, ways to pull in different thought leadership? So I think that's, that's a, a great, um, kind of closing today is that we can implement with some of those resource groups. It also takes the leadership. And I think when I talk about 
the pathways is really focusing on talent. So looking at who's who's got different talents for different roles and getting the right people in those roles. I know that you guys do work with some, some different assessments, personality assessments to help you guys build your team. So I feel like um, you've shared a lot of different ways that people can really roll this out into their own lives and their own businesses. So um, I really appreciate you sharing that with us today. And uh, I really appreciate the partnerships that we've been able to have, whether it's with different products that I work with to help clients, but then other organizations too. So I can't remember though, are you coming to the conference? I sure am, I'm counting down, I'm excited. <laughs> okay, so I will see you soon. And I love that I've seen you mo so many times this year. So again, Lynette, thanks for being here. And I appreciate you being here. And for the listeners, thanks for being here as well. Thank you. Have a great day. Bye. Thank you for joining us on today's episode of The Amber Stitch Show. For more information about the podcast, books, articles, and more, please visit me at amberstitt.com. Until next week, enjoy your journey at home and at work. Thank you for listening.